more women getting married these days? Because these men are... They don't know how to settle down. They are insecure. And because they don't... They, they're in the feminine energy. They need to be... They need to be masculine because we are masculine. So where's the feminine energy? You feel me? You feel me? Pay it. It sounded like you took the short bus to school. I wish I had a time machine. That way I could teleport myself 60 years into the future. Just to have a conversation with people like this. And you know, the super red pill. I just want to see who they are 60 years from now, 50 years from now. Do you still have that same type of energy? I'm not going to lie. I want to see what's going to happen when all these females that got BBLs become senior citizens. Boy, them nursing homes going to be crazy. As a seven-year-old girl who had to watch me and my brothers jump her daddy after school, I'm sorry. I know that was probably a traumatizing experience for you. But we kept asking you to stop bullying my daughter and you wouldn't listen. We sent letters home. We even had a meeting with you and your parents and you wouldn't listen. So now you know your actions have consequences. And since you're too young to receive those consequences, you had to watch your daddy take those consequences. <laughs> Get some therapy. You'll be all right. <laughs> a lot of y'all keep asking why I didn't fight this man one-on-one. -on -one. And why I got my brothers to jump him in front of his seven-year-old daughter. And the answer is simple. Life is not fair. You get jumped by responsibilities every day. Bullying is not fair because you're picking on somebody that's essentially a weaker vessel and that's smarter than you. So I wanted to make sure she saw what it looked like when a fight is not fair and you don't have no choice but to let somebody jump you. So she could get the concept of what she was doing. Sometimes kids learn from what they see and not what they hear. So I wanted it to be a visual experience, okay? I'm out here doing the Lord's work, okay? God is pleased with this. I understand not liking people bullying your kids. I've been to the park with my son and watched kids bully him. And I be feeling some type of way. But at the same time, what example am I setting for my child? Underneath me watching my son get bullied or pushed around on the playground, I don't say nothing because I want to see him stand up for himself. He going to have to stand up for himself. I'm not going to be there to save him every time. I'm not going to be there to tell the parent, hey, bro, tell your kids lay off my son. I understand where you're coming from by putting hands on that little girl daddy. But at the same time, what is the long-term ramifications for that? Oh, uh, do you have anything in your hidden photos section? Just nudes. Just do me, and, me, and, me and panties, me and panties, not really shit. Why do girls have news of themselves? Because, like, we want to look good. We want to remind ourselves what these men are missing. It's not about sending it to nobody. Like, I don't send my news to nobody. I don't have nobody to send that shit to. But it's like a confidence day, boost like, or something? I, yeah, I want to remind myself, like, even with my bitch, like, I want to remind her, like, she tells me, Lyra, you're bad as fuck. So, so that's why I don't see, like, screenshots and, like, pictures yeah. of myself. Oh, pictures of my... Like, like sexy pictures. Or naughty pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I just got suspicious things up in there. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I keep Snapchat. personal pictures. Yeah, personal. <laughs> Please, you know keep, I keep my man in there. Okay. You know okay. I mean? Oh, uh, do you have anything in your hand? Hey, sometimes they keep it for safekeeping so they can share them like Pokemon cards. I never understand females that send nudes when you send a guy a picture you basically agreeing for at least 15 other people to see that picture hey you don't even know bro i don't know if you guys know but i was a step daddy i did everything for this girl i fed her child i treated her good i gave her a home paid no bills everything for free free some car gas money everything i bought that car seat matter of fact i bought her daughter clothes i bought her daddy food everything just for her to go and chew on me with the with the father of the baby. Lesson learned, guys. Damn. I ever trust the I fixed that shit up. She fucked it up. I fixed it. I tried my best to fix that. I bought her that. I put gas in it. I did everything. Everything that's in here, I bought her. She lived with me rent free, nothing. Just for her to cheat on me, bro. Lesson learned, guys. Don't ever trust the All that over some dick. Well, you guys, yeah. my bestie, you know, yeah, she, yeah, she's kind of famous on TikTok. She's not the person who you think she is. Everybody go hate on this. Real niggas like me. Real niggas like me don't deserve this shit. Hey, you don't need real niggas like me. Real niggas like me don't deserve this shit. Real niggas like me don't deserve this shit, bro. Never again. Never in my life.
like, bro, you sound crazy. I understand you hurt, and I'm hurt with you, but dude, you sound crazy. He giving her that whole spill. It's over with. Let her go, dog. That's easier said than done, but let her go. Hey, you're they were fucking kid. This fucking bitch. On my mama, bro. I did everything for her, just for her to do this to me. They were in my fucking life. Show your fucking face. What? Never again, bro. Fuck. She don't give a damn. You know what to say? You're drinking palms away. She don't give a damn. She don't care. When your chick do something to you and you sit there trying to give it a speech and make her feel bad, when she don't feel bad, it hurts even more. <laughs> it hurts even more when you sitting there trying to throw combinations and she just she barely moving she don't give a f the combinations ain't hitting bro don't do it your girl hurt you don't sit there trying to make her feel bad it's already happened what's done is done <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. How is it she struggling and the camera person is is it look like the camera person is floating in the air? I feel as though my Caribbean, my Asian people. Well, you know what? Let me not generalize. Let me say for me, when I used to go to school, it used to be a river that I used to cross. And when it rained and all that that water was just coming down there, we was jumping rock jumping over the rocks to get to the other side. Boy, I ain't gonna lie, that shit was scary. This is the most dangerous cheese in the world. It's Casu Marzu cheese from Sardinia, Italy. Because there are thousands of maggots on this cheese. So many people are afraid to try. But it's also the presence of maggots. That's what gives this cheese its unique taste and texture. Casu Marzu cheese has been around for thousands of years. It's made from sheep's milk. The workers first squeeze out the milk. Then they pour it into a big pot. The temperature needs to be kept at 75 degrees centigrade. Otherwise, the proteins inside will heat denature, and the cheese can't be made. Then they need to cool it down, so that the goat's milk and the goat's milk mix well. Afterwards, the sediment is removed and drained to form a cylindrical shape. And after three weeks of drying, the workers will remove the rind of the cheese, so that the cheese attracts flies to lay their eggs. This is the local cheese fly. They eat and lay eggs at the same time. In about two to three months, these maggots will hatch and eat the cheese, and then they expel them again. This process will be repeated many times. It's a process that turns the original cheese into a soft kasu marzu. The flavor is a bit like a delicious ice cream for this kind of cheese. Would you like to try it? I don't want to say nothing too crazy because that's somebody's culture, okay? I don't want to disrespect nobody's culture. I just know I just know that I wouldn't be trying that cheese, okay? Um, I feel as though my taste buds aren't that adventurous. Pause. Good morning. How y'all doing? Because allow me to take y'all memory back and remind y'all that chicken wings with french fries will forever be cracked. Back in my day, you didn't even need $10 at that. Nine times out of ten... $5 could get you a full plate of this crack. Because all my raw rights know that chicken wings with french fries with covered the, with mad barbecue mad sauce. Mad barbecue hustle. sauce. True effects has never been spoken. After school, we used to go to the Chinese store and get us the chicken wings with the french fries. And your french fries got to be swimming in the barbecue sauce. Your french fries got to be swimming in barbecue sauce. To be quite honest with you, I don't even know if that's really barbecue sauce. Because since I've been out here... And been going to Costco's and Publix and, and Walmart. I have never tasted any barbecue sauce that tasted quite like the barbecue sauce we used to have when we used to go to them Chinese stores when I was in high school. Ever be a go? This entree slash platter held me down when my pockets was low. Yes, this sir. This shit off of five dollars at times even fed me in the bros. Facts. If you know, you know. No. Chop them chicken wings up, though, in a homemade iced tea to go. Yo, you don't got five dollars, my G, but I got two fifty. How about you match me and we get 
We get busy. The crack. We get busy. All right? Yeah. And don't be around somebody that play too much because this... True facts has never been spoken. I remember when I was going to Wingate, me and my boy Nando, we got out of school. We be on Utica Empire. So if you walk up Utica a little bit, it's a Chinese store right there. This was the spot only because we could get our fries and get our, our chicken or whatever, and we could see the bus. So my boys get two pieces of chicken and a small fry, and we used to share that. We used to share that. You feel me? We used to share that. It was back in the days. This is very, very true. Typical African men's behavior. African men, they abandon most of them. A lot of them abandon their children with their mothers, but yet they do not, they don't marry women that already have children from their past relationships. Mm. So it's even a problem for the African man's family if the man finds a woman that already have children. It's, com it's completely okay if the man already have children. But it's not okay if the woman already have children from her past relationship. Mm. On the other hand, in African men's mind, only women get old. Men don't get old. In most African country, women that are on their thirties and women that already have children from their past relationship get to have harder time to find partners. And because of that, it makes women very insecure and makes the women to rush and settle in sad, miserable relationships and marriage. And a lot of the time, they have to be with men that already have multiple wives, even if it's not religiously related. Mm -hmm. this One thing I, I could say about African niggas, excluding the fact that my best friend is, you know, Nigerian. But one thing I can say, bro, them dudes is bold. They're bold. It has been two different instances where an African man has offered my wife a car. The last situation, the last one I coached it. Uh, my wife took an Uber. The guy was talking to her. She was talking about needing a car to go to work and stuff like that. He said, oh, I have a car. I have a car. I give you the car. So I was like, oh, okay, well, shit. Well, he wants us to come pick it up. As soon as he found out her husband is coming with her to pick the car up, he put a price on it. He put a price on it. I ain't gonna hold you. When I went to get the car, bro, I wanted to slap the shit out that nigga because he said some shit. He's like, oh, man, I, you have a beautiful wife. I, I was gonna give her the car. I was gonna give her the car because I thought she was beautiful. I had to keep my composure. I did a good job keeping my composure. But, yeah, bro, African niggas are bold.